trying to explain what heat is is actually not very uh, easy in particular how that heat is actually um, transferring so what is this concept of heat so i'm going to try to do my best to explain this well so heat is nothing else but simply the thermal energy which is transitioning from a warmer substance to a colder substance so i'm going to just highlight here the key which is the energy in transition so if you think of two objects and those two particular objects it doesn't matter okay what they are okay so let's say here's one and i'm going to duplicate this you know here's another one well they both will have a certain amount of thermal energy and if you bring them in contact together so let's say if you bring them in contact in this way what will happen is the one which has more thermal energy will slowly try to transfer the energy back into the one which has less now having more thermal energy means that you're warmer and having less means that you're colder okay these are two relative terms warmer just means with respect to something else and colder of course means something Okay, which is less thermal energy with respect to something else. So that transition, so as it transitions from one into the other, so that particular energy, well, we refer to that as heat. And now for heat, very often you will see that in physics, it's going to be designated with a capital Q. Now it's very similar to something when you're talking about mechanical energies, and in particular, when you're talking about mechanical energies, you can transfer energy from one form to another, for example, from kinetic to potential, okay, by doing work. And that work was energy in transition. Well, when you're talking about thermal energy, you're doing the same kind of discussion, except in thermal energy, that energy in transition is referred to as heat. Now, very often those two are interchanged in language, even if you are doing physics or something else. So don't be surprised that people will interchange them. Although technically thermal energy is the energy and heat is actually the energy transitioning to either another form, okay, or into another substance. So now there are three common methods of transitioning thermal energy. One of them I just kind of showed you. and I'm gonna come back to this one in just a moment. We'll delete it for a second. So those three common methods of transitioning thermal energy from one object to another, or from one substance to another, okay, is that you can either do it through conduction, through convection, okay, or through radiation. Now, the easiest one to explain is for sure conduction. So what is this form of conduction? So let's try to talk about that one. So that's the first one. So conduction will happen in terms of the transition of thermal energy. And this happens by physical contact. And this physical contact, okay, that we are referring to, doesn't necessarily have to be between two solids, although it is the easiest probably to explain. So as I have done it, okay, so if you have two solid objects and then you bring them to a physical contact in this case, well, then what you will have in, would, what you will see is that the thermal energy will start to transition from the warmer one to the colder one. Now, what is exactly this thermal energy? So please don't forget, because it contains the kinetic energy of the particles and also the potential energy. Okay? Now, in terms of the explanation, it's much easier to think about the kinetic energy itself. So for example, if you do have particles, and in here, okay, these particles are moving, and okay, now they're randomly kind of scattered along, but as you know that on this kind of contact point, well, you're going to have some of them, okay, from the warmer one, and they're going to be attaching or hitting the ones from the slower one. So both of these are going to get in contact and they're going to collide. Now, the ones that are faster will collide with the ones that are slower and they're going to speed them up and therefore increasing the thermal energy, okay, of that colder item, okay, or the one which has slower items moving. Okay, or these particles that are moving. And when it hits, okay, so it will lose some of its kinetic energy, right? So in this case, the thermal energy, and therefore the warmer okay, substance okay, at that particular point will slowly start to you know, lose. And what that means is that's the heat that it's actually transferring. And that's conduction. So conduction is by that physical discussion okay, between two items. 
and they don't have to be necessarily two solids. It could be a solid, okay, and a liquid. For example, if you put a spoon, okay, inside of a very hot liquid, so let's say maybe water like tea or coffee, and that particular spoon, okay, is maybe made out of metal, and you put it inside, well, now you're gonna create a contact point, so there's gonna be physical contact between the liquid Okay, and the spoon, and you'll notice that that spoon is going to warm up because the actual heat is transferring into that spoon from okay, the very hot liquid okay, that it is in. So that's conduction, so that's number one. Now, what about convection? So this one is actually a little bit harder to try to explain. So number two, in terms of convection, so let's see how we can try our best to explain this one. Now, convection happens, okay, not between solids, okay? So this will happen, so first, okay, this will happen between a liquid, okay, or within liquids, okay, or within gases. So these are the two kind of states that it occurs in. But there can be some conduction along the way that starts the process. So let's think about how this actually happens, and I'll have to talk a little bit, okay, also about density. So here, if you imagine, let's say if you have a pot, okay, so this pot right here is maybe sitting, okay, on a hot oven. So this particular oven, okay, that you have right there, so you have a contact point between the pot, okay, and the actual hot plate, okay, that is going to be transferring the heat. Now, this would have been conduction, right, so because the pot is sitting on the actual, let's say, stove, okay, and then it tries, tries exactly by the same method, Okay, as I've just explained for conduction. So that's going to be conduction. But now let's imagine that we do have a liquid inside of here. And in this particular case, what's going to happen is that at the bottom point, so this is right here at the surface, sure, the pot itself is going to try to increase. So it's going to warm up. And as an impact, it's also going to have an impact on all of the particles that are kind of at the bottom of this pot. Right? So these particular particles are going to now, by okay, the fact of actually conduction, they're going to increase their temperatures. Now that means that they're increasing their thermal energy. So there's heat transfer there. That's not convection. So all of this is still kind of conduction in a sense. But what makes it convection is that as soon as you have these bottom particles okay, that are increasing in temperature and increasing in thermal energy, well, because they're going to speed up, what happens to them, so I'm going to kind of draw them out, okay, in here, what's gonna happen in them, they're going to start to move a lot faster and they're going to create more space in between, okay, other particles along their way. Now, the ones that are above, because it's a liquid, so you have all of these other particles that are kind of sitting, okay, on top, and these particles are not spread out as much, okay, as the ones that are all the way at the bottom. So these ones are much closer together. So when they're much closer together, so we say that this, okay, is more dense, okay, than this. So this is less dense than the actual ones that are sitting up above. Now what happens, okay, in fact of when something which is more dense and something which is less dense, and you can kind of visualize this yourself, that these particles, you know, are going to kind of push along because there's quite a lot of space here, so they're going to kind of fall towards the bottom. And then the ones that are moving a little bit faster are going to kind of shift over and they're going to move kind of towards the top. And this is the process of the convection. So convection just simply means that now all of a sudden you're creating some kind of a current. So there's a flow between the ones that are moving faster and the ones that are moving less faster. So the less dense one starts to fall down. So what you create is, you know, these ones are moving up okay, and these ones are moving down. And this is the current that is created. Now, of course, the one that will fall at the bottom, now these ones are going to warm up, right? Because they're in touch and that's gonna happen through con conduction. So they're gonna be kind of at the bottom and this process continues. And what happens, these ones will rise eventually. Now, as they keep rising up above there, the other ones keep falling down. Well, eventually as they kind of rise through, they also hit some of the slower ones so they lose some of their energy. And eventually when they kind of move all the way up, the ones at the bottom, okay, are going to be once again, much uh, warmer, okay, and therefore moving faster, and because it took a little bit of time, so now the ones on top now again start to fall down because they're a little bit more dense. Now, 
this kind of circular pattern, it's not exactly circular. I've drawn it circular, but they kind of go up and then some of them fall down. Well, that pattern that is created, right, that you have between ones which are more dense, so the ones which are faster with thermal energy are moving up, the ones which have less are moving down, and this kind of just repeats and then it just kind of continues. But every time they fall back down, they'll have a little bit more energy right then they started off with before you started to put them on the oven and therefore you know you slowly are going to be increasing this increasing this increasing this okay meaning the thermal energy so this is the transfer of the heat and that transfer of the heat eventually you know you're going to be more or less at the same amount of thermal energy and then at that point you know you either will have so if it's water maybe boils off and then you know you'll have particles that are going to be changing into a gas Okay, and then maybe we'll be escaping. But the process okay, of this kind of circular pattern or the ones that are kind of moving up and ones that are moving down, that is called convection. And that happens in liquids and it also happens in gases. And in gases, sometimes very often what happens is, you know, you'll have the sun which is shining down on the earth. Okay, the earth is heating up, so it will increase the temperature of the gas of the air which is just right around okay, the earth, and then that one will rise and then the other one will fall. So you have this rising and falling okay, and then this pattern. And this also happens over lakes okay, um, and oceans. Okay, so you have these currents okay, with respect to the heat being transferred. So that's convection. So I hope that that makes sense to you. The last one, unfortunately, when you are a student and you are studying this thermal energy, most likely you're gonna be studying this for the first time maybe in grade 11 or in a foundations course, and you haven't actually talked about something okay, with regards to electricity and magnetism, which comes a little bit later after thermal energy. Um, but that's okay, right? So what happens is there's a third way that we call radiation that actually is the transfer. So this is the transfer of thermal energy. So basically heat transitioning from one form to another. And one very interesting way is radiation. Now, what the heck is radiation, right? So here, conduction, very easy, things in contact. Convection also seems to be rather okay in terms of understanding, you know, things are kind of particles moving up, particles falling down, and then those heating up, and then they're creating this convection current, okay, that we have. But radiation is much different than the previous two. So what happens in radiation, and all I want you really to think about is light. And in particular, when you're just beginning this, let's just talk about the sun. I think that as you carry on in your studies, and if you do eventually get to electricity magnetism, okay, you're going to talk about this radiation, which is a very fancy um, word, and I'm, I try to avoid it, but I'll give it to you anyways. It's called electro magnetic waves, electro, magnetic, okay, magnetic waves. And this word wave, okay, is, okay, what that transitioning, what that radiation is. Now, if you think of these waves as basically kind of light, right, which, are, which is coming from the sun, then it's going to be much easier for you to think about this. So, well, let's, let's give it a go. So let's imagine that, you know, here's our sun. Sorry, I'm, running, I'm drawing it in, in red here. But on the sun, what happens is, well, that sun, so you have a lot of energy, right, which is happening because there's kind of um, nuclear reactions there. So there's nuclear energy, okay, which is increasing the thermal energy okay, of the sun. And that thermal energy okay, eventually escapes. So now when it escapes okay, from the sun, um, it transfers. Now, it's kind of like magic. It literally transfers. And it's not necessarily just a particle. So we actually call it a photon, okay? Um, which is something very special. It doesn't necessarily have any mass. So it transfers into this typically non-visible. Light is kind of, we can still see, you know, light because then we can see how it's reflecting and it comes into our eyes. But the light itself, is a transition from the thermal energy that the sun carries, and then it turns into this wave, right? This photon. So it transitions almost like magic. 
and then it sends out this wave and then this waves get sent out eventually okay it gets captured so here is the earth you know far far away and it will get captured right so it will either so this within here it is carrying the actual energy so this is the the heat the radiation okay that's what the radiation is it is that transfer right there that is happening it's the transition from the thermal energy of the sun or any light sources by the way i'm just talking about the sun because i want to make it simpler but it is from any kind of light sources that we have and actually any objects and some of them they're not really just light. They are actually called electromagnetic waves. So they have different spectrum, right? And different wavelengths, things that you're gonna talk about a little bit later, but you can just think of a simple wave, right? That you can imagine that's kind of passing along, but you can't always see it. And those particular waves are carrying energy. And then this is the transition that will happen. So that transition that will happen eventually will get captured by something on the earth right or something that it will hit and then it will now transfer right that energy from the radiation it will transfer into something else possibly thermal energy or use it for something else like in photosynthesis where the plants actually use that and capture the radiation to bring out and create chemical energy within so that is the third component i don't want to go any much deeper i don't think that you have to know much deeper than this Okay, in terms of the transfer, what I want you to know is that the transitioning between the thermal energies from one substance to another substance is referred to as heat in physics. And that heat can transfer in three different ways, or the thermal energy can transfer in three different ways. Conduction, which is basically by physical contact. Okay, so that's one. Convection, okay, which is by the particles kind of moving around and the density okay as they get kind of less dense they'll rise up okay more dense they'll fall down and then this continues on this process and then radiation where things are objects like the sun okay transfer that energy into these waves that are sent out okay kind of like light and then that light is carrying the energy so it can be captured by something else and that's radiation all right, so that is all that I have for you in this video. I hope that the three methods are a little bit more understandable to you. Now sit down, write them out for yourself or talk them out on your own to see if you really can understand them by giving some examples. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.